What's going on guys? Welcome to the 55th Xamarin Android tutorial. So this video along with the, the next few videos are going to be working with fragments, all right? So we've worked with fragments a little bit and more just using them when, it, when in the project that we're working on required it, but we really haven't gone into detail about a uh, fragment in Android and when to usually, uh, when to commonly use them and what they can be useful for. And then also now that we just gone over frame layouts in the, in the previous tutorials, we can now look at how the frame layout is is really much intertwined with the fragment and how we can actually use those two uh, tools to really give us give our app you um, some uniqueness so what we have here is actually four fragments okay all on the same activity which what a fragment does is it fits inside of a host activity okay and this host activity is actually the drawer layout that we implemented a few tutorials ago and i decided to use this because of the fact that a lot of times we want to use a fragment in most cases is when we don't want to re-implement re the the navigation drawer that we built or the toolbar action bar this right navigation drawer so you know if we went to another activity we would have to re-implement re all of this stuff right here so what's re um, really useful about a fragment one of the things is that we can actually take this fragment and we can actually put uh what we need to i'm sorry take the frame layout and put multiple fragments inside of it all using the same activity so this stuff remains throughout the fragments all right so given our users a really seamless kind of effect that we give with all the fragments so here's here's fragment one and then i have a little overflow menu to show the different examples and we have a cool transition that comes in for fragment two and the same thing for fragment three and then when we have fragment four we have this thing that comes up and then we can drag it up and then notice that it only takes in about two-thirds of the screen and then it drags it back down if we want to back up. So we're going to go through all of this stuff in the next few tutorials. And then our finished project is going to look something like this that has all of, all of this all of these uh, fragments in it. So this is the fourth fragment. And as you can know, we, we can actually now drag it and then make it go away. Bring back fragment one. And then we can hit the back button to go back to all of our previous fragments back down to fragment one again. So we're going to show how to we're going to see how to do all of these things and uh, much more in the next few tutorials. So let's get started, guys. Let's go ahead and check out what we need to do to get this started. Now, what I'm going to be starting off of from the previous, um, so like I said, the previous videos from the uh, I believe it's tutorial 50. So if you if you come over here into my YouTube uh, video of tutorial 50, I'll be using this library when I actually go ahead and you can download it. It's a zip file that you can go ahead and download and then extract. So get it from here, and I already have it downloaded. It's right here, and then I'll go ahead and extract it. And like I said, I'm using this and not starting off fresh because uh, fragments are really put to use when we go ahead and when we actually use them inside of an activity, and we can reuse the drawers and stuff like that. So that's what makes this tutorial really ideal. So I'll go ahead and open up this one. Go ahead and bring that one over there. All right, so this is what we, uh, if you guys are following along with this, this is where we should start off. Of course, if you do want to just have your own uh, project, that's totally fine. We're ba basically be using the frame layout, which will go here and I'll show you guys here in a second. So let's go ahead and uh, I like to do a make sure I do a rebuild when I start, make sure everything's all cleaned up. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and it rebuilt fine. Let's go ahead and run it. That way we can see where we're starting off at. And what it should be is a, a project that looks similar to the one that I just ran, except for a few subtle differences. And notice that we, we don't have any kind of overflow. So there's no fragments in here currently. So this is where we will start, guys. Now let's go ahead and open up. We're going to want to open up the main AXML file. Now inside of here, coming to the source, we'll see that we have a relative layout for our main view. So the main content view, remember, is just a text view. Now let's go ahead and change that to a frame layout. And this is going to act as the container for the for the fragments that we are going to, to inject inside of this frame layout. And because we're going to do that, we're going to need, of course, the an ID of it so that we can reference it. So we'll call it fragment container. And that's pretty much it, okay? So 
we want to make sure that we, we take out this text view since nothing is going to be inside of it. And if we come over here, we can see that we have an empty frame layout. And this is going to be this is going to act as a holder for all the fragments. All right, so we can close out of that now. Now, if we come into our main uh, activity, our CS file, what we want to first do is we want to actually add the fragment to the frame layout. And what we need first, of course, is a fragment. So let's go into our, our solution explorer and let's go ahead and right click and we're gonna add a folder, okay? So we're gonna add a new folder. We'll call it fragments. And this is gonna be uh, the holder, of course. This folder is gonna hold a whole bunch of fragments. So let's go ahead and make a fragment, right click new file. And we'll, we'll come into here and we can actually add a fragment here. It'll actually set up a template for us or we can actually just do a blank file, but we'll do the fragment and we'll call it fragment one. So Xamarin, what it does is actually, it overrides two main methods, the on create and on create view. All right. So this is important guys, because of the fact that the fragment has a, a life cycle, just like the activity. Bring that up right here. So now if you, if you, if you look inside of the developer documentation, you can see that the fragment has a uh, life cycle. So it's a uh, first methods calls on attach, then on create. All right, which is the same on create right here. And then we have the on create view and then it goes into on activity created on start on resume. The fragment is active and doing what it needs to do. And there's, it splits off. Okay. So notice right here, it splits off into two things. It goes in user navigates backward or fragment is removed or replaced. So when the user navigates back to an, another fragment, uh, it comes into the on pause on stop, just like here. But here's the main difference. It calls on destroy view and then it goes and destroys itself and on destroy and on attach where here, if it, if it actually is active and then the fragment is added to a back stack. So we'll, we'll look at that here in the next video when we actually add a, a transaction to the back stack and then it's actually added. What happens is it calls on destroy view. However, it comes back into on create view and then the view is ready to be created again. So this is the main difference between what happens. And this happens when you, when you, when you go back to the fragment simply from going to another. And this is what happens when you actually, uh, the fragment is added to the back stack and then it's removed or replaced. Okay. So this, and this is what happens. And like I said, we'll get more into this, but just make sure that this is kind of keep this in your head for now. Let's go back into the code. So this is our on create and then on create view is actually uh, called by the, by the framework right afterwards. So this is much like, of course, doing it in many other cases where we're going to do this. And we've done this before with uh, dialogue fragments. So let's go ahead and create a view. This is going to be the main view. This is going to be the view that we're going to create here in a second. We'll do inflate and let's leave it at that for a second because we're going to, we're going to come into our layout and we're actually going to add an AXML file that this fragment is going to, to actually uh, inflate. So we'll call it fragment one dot AXML. And then inside of this one, all we're really going to do, nothing too special. What we'll do is we'll actually just have a text view and then we're just going to send it inside of the text view. All right. So we'll do text view and then we'll do layout width wrap. And then of course the height we will want to wrap as well. And then the text will just will just hard code it since it will know since that way it'll kind of signify what fragment we are in. And then we'll do a background color. Actually, we'll not we'll hold off on that. We'll do a background color on here. Let's change this to an a relative layout. So then it'll be a little easier to center the text view. And this is how most of the fragments are going to be. So as soon as we set this one up, we can just go ahead and pretty much copy and paste it and then just change the background color so that we can really see the difference between the fragments. And we'll do a grayish color. It's coming to here. And we'll need to change this text color to black, give it some contrast. And then finally, because now we're in a relative layout, we can do layout center and parent true. And that should be now centered. So there's our first fragment. So now that we have our XML file, let's go ahead and save that, close it. 
And this is going to be that file that we just created is going to be the file that we're actually going to inflate. So if we do resource dot layout dot fragment one, and then we can do container is going to be the parent and then false because we don't want to attach it. Let's see, that might just be giving us an error. Oops, a little typo there. There it is. All right, and then the next thing that we need to do, and the last thing actually, is just go ahead and return the view, okay? So it's gonna inflate, it's going to inflate this entire view, and then it's gonna go ahead and return the view so that the fragment can take care of the rest. And then here's what we'll do when you find view by IDs or anything, but we're not gonna do it, of course, in this fragment. All it's gonna be is just kind of a, a reading only thing that we're gonna just kind of view this and then go on to the next one. But let's go ahead and add this now. We're gonna add it to the to the frame layout. So we're gonna add it to, remember this guy over here, we're gonna actually add it here to the frame layout. So how do we do that? How do we actually add a fragment to a frame layout? Well, it's not too bad. What we're gonna do actually is we're going to use the fragment manager. And one little thing I, I, I forgot, I almost forgot, is the fragment. Notice that fragment, it actually inherits from the, it's actually coming from the Android, That's the one. So it's actually being derived from Android app. Sorry about that guys. And the uh, fragment right here. So now there's two different kind of fragments. There's this one and there's one that's coming from the support library. So the support library is actually going to be getting it from the support library four. So depending on what you're using the fragment or if you're using support library, you'll have to use the support fragment manager or just a normal fragment manager. All right, so keep that in mind when you're creating fragments. So here, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be using the support. So if you just leave it at fragment, Xamarin is gonna infer that you're gonna be using it from the Android app. Now, if you go ahead and use it from here, you can use it from the using Android support uh, version four, and that's gonna be actually using the, the support library fragment. And we're gonna actually ex explicitly put that just so that we don't forget and because we're using the support fragment, we're gonna be need, needed to use the support fragment manager, okay? So let's go ahead and go back to our main activity. And our support, support fragment manager is actually easy accessible, and that's through the fragment activity, which action bar activity actually inherits from. So we're fine in there. Now what we can do is we can do support fragment manager. And then now look at that we have a support fragment manager. And what we can do is we can actually begin a transaction, all right? So what we wanna do is we can actually do var trans and then support fragment. So we have a we have a transaction and that's, this is how we actually communicate is through the support fragment manager with fragments. We, we can actually manipulate fragments with the fragment manager and uh, the fragment is starting to become a, a hard word to say because <laughs> He's saying it over and over again, right? It just starts to get harder. But uh, anyway, I'll do my best. The fragment manager, the support fragment manager, and then the uh, it begins a transaction. So the transaction is what actually takes the fragment and puts it into the frame layout, okay? So let's go ahead and do that now, guys. Let's go and do trans, and then we'll do add. So we want to add a fragment, okay? And we're gonna be using this one right here. We want to use a container view ID. Well, remember that is the, the frame layout that we had, so we'll do fragment container. Remember, uh, just in case you forgot, that's not that one, that's this thing right here, okay? So we're taking that, and then we're adding, we're taking that and we're adding a fragment to it. So what we can do here is we can just do new fragment one, all right? So remember that's this thing right here. It calls its on create view automatically, then returns it. And then of course the fragment tag, if you will, and basically that just, just tags it if we need to reference the the fragment with a transaction to get it, okay? So we'll go ahead basically and let's overview it. This is where we wanna put it, this is what we're putting, and this is the ID that we can actually reference it back to. Now remember in transactions you have to call commit, okay? Cause that's not enough, just add it. So make sure you call commit and then I'll actually uh, commit it and then this will finalize the transaction. So by default, basically what's gonna happen is the, is the fragment is gonna be in the frame layout now. So if we go ahead and run this, we should be able to see that our fragment one is now, has been inflated inside of our frame layout. 
bring up the emulator. All right. And there you have it, guys. There's here's our fragment one. Uh, nothing really, you know, too pretty to look at, of course, but we do have a working fragment inside of our activity. So our, you can see that now that our activity is still fully functional in every way. And then now we have a fragment here. So now that that's basically the, the gist of the, 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 the basics of adding a fragment to our activity. So now what we want to do is we're going to want to actually add multiple fragments, of course, and then we can start seeing how we can give some cool animations. We can actually move fragments like we were doing in the, uh, the fragment four in the beginning of the video. So that's going to be all coming up in the next videos, but hopefully this one will get you started into in mainly using the transactions and how to actually take a fragment and then give it its own view and then actually add it to your activity using the support fragment manager or just the fragment manager if you're using the the normal fragments from the the, uh, the android.app library all right guys so like i said in the next video we'll go ahead and we'll work on transactions a little more by actually taking multiple fragments and removing them and are actually uh, adding and hiding the other ones to show the correct fragments that we actually want the viewer to see all right thanks for watching guys